This is Reggie Kelly, former Cincinnati Bengals and Atlanta Falcons tight end, and you're listening to TNT Thursday Night Tailgate. Brace yourself for the explosion. All right, now back with us and making his fifth appearance with us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is former Jets defensive back Victor Green. Let me remind you a little bit about Victor's background. He's from Americus, Georgia, which is in the southwest part of the state. And for those of you that don't know about Americus, it's certainly a hotbed of football talent. A couple of our regular guests, former uh, Rams Pro Bowl guard Kent Hill and, and head coach Dan Reeves are from there. And that's just to name a few. They've had so many talented football players come out of Americus and, and play in the NFL. It's unbelievable. Victor started his college uh, football career at Capaya Lynch Community College, where he was twice named to the Gridiron All-American team. From there, he went on to attend the University of Akron, where he earned two degrees, one in criminal justice and another in political science. He was an undrafted free agent signed by the New York Jets in 1993, played safety in the NFL from 93 to 2003 with the Jets, Patriots, and Saints. He led the NFL in tackles in back-to-back seasons in 95 and 96. In fact, in 96, he set a Jets record with 20 tackles in a game against the Buffalo Bills. Over the course of his career, he had 961 tackles, 25 interceptions, recovered 17 fumbles, forced nine of them, had seven sacks, and he scored three touchdowns. In 2003, he was named to the Jets' all-time team. He was also named the best strong safety in Jets history. And if you ask me, he's the standard by which all Jets safeties are going to be measured from here going out. And uh, we are very honored he's back with us again tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Victor, Chris, and Bob, thanks for coming back on the show. Hey, Victor. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Victor, I wanted to start off our time with you, and I got to get your thoughts on the Jets. Um, how do you feel about the direction the Jets are going in? It, uh, you know, obviously losing Sam Darnold didn't didn't help things, but how do you feel about where they're headed? I don't know yet, uh, guys. I really don't. Uh, I've been doing some studying on the Jets, and you know, with all the injuries they got right now, I think if they can go one and two, two and a two, two maybe. Two and one of the next three games is going to be their toughest game of the season with uh, Philly, Dallas, and New England. If they can get two and one. I think the last, the next ten games is pretty winnable if they can get everybody, everybody, everybody back healthy. I think they got a chance. You know, um, they play hard every week, but they have got to come back and create some offense for this team. I mean, we scored three points in the last two games, and that's just not enough. You know, guys. Uh, Seem to be playing hard, but uh, it's just not getting it done right now. So I'm a little optimistic about the, the remaining games, uh, but they got to get healthy and they, they got to they got to put up some points in the next three games to give us any confidence that they can they can play the next 10, 13 games. And Victor Jamal Adams, you know, is a safety that's obviously you know burst onto the scene. They're very high on him. He's a heck of a player. Wanted to get your thoughts on him and and, and in particular the roughing the quarterback. Hit than the fine that he got last week for the hit on Baker Mayfield. What do you think? What do you think about Adams? And what do you think about the hit? Well, you know, I, I love Adam. I love his uh, tenacity. I love his energy. I love the way he play. Uh, he plays hard every game, but he just cannot get that Antonio, you know, uh, AB Bryant, Antonio Bryant mentality. You know, uh, you gotta you gotta play smart uh, football. You can't be a detriment to the team. You know, I think you got two personal fouls back to back. You know, you can't, you can't have that. So that negate, you know, interception he may have or fumble they may cause or whatever. You just, you just can't have those type of plays. He got to be smarter than that. I know he didn't mean to go in. Hopefully he didn't to, to get into cheap shots, but he got to understand, you know, he's, he's the, you know, he's the guru to hold that team together right now defensively, him and Mosley, and they need him out on the football field and he's making those type of you know, unnecessary hits, you know, get ejected and miss the game, you know, that can hurt that defense. Victor, you mentioned Antonio Brown and Bob and I were talking about him a moment ago. As a former defensive guy, when you see what's gone on with Antonio Brown, you see guys like Odell Beckham wearing a $200,000 watch, you know, during a game. And we talked about this a little bit with Greg Lloyd last week. And he pointed out how guys like that are, you know, sort of drawing attention to themselves and they're not about team. How do you feel about when you when you hear some of these stories about Brown and Beckham and guys like that? Idiots. I mean, you know, I mean that's you know that's harsh, but it's the idiots, man. I mean, you know, you you know, we're on a two hundred thousand dollar watch. Why? Right? You get it ripped off. You lose diamonds in it. Somebody pull it off like Talib did, or 
you know, cat crab tree, what, two years ago. I mean, it just, there's no need to have a $200,000 watch, you know, and, and AB case, I mean, you know, the NFL don't need him. He needs the NFL. So those type of antics and things that he's been doing is pretty much since he left Pittsburgh or while he at Pittsburgh, you know, he's just hurting himself. You know, he said, Hey, I'm retired. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, who are you hurting? I mean, I'm not turning on the TV just to watch you play, right? The team's not, you know, and I want to give you $10 million a year, you know, just so you can, you know, you can, you can act a fool. So, you know, he got to be smarter than that. He got to have people in his corner that really care about him as a human being and not just be, you know, a passenger rider and say, Hey, man, cut that crap out, man. You know, this is, you know, like you said, this is a privilege to play in the NFL. You know, we don't need you. You need us, right? And to represent that shield, you know, is special. And he's not doing that, man. It's, it's me, 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 I, 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 I. And it's just not going to fly in the NFL. And you see that now. Team's not picking him up. Five questions for Victor. Yeah, Victor, it's, uh, it's great to speak with you, as always. And I, I think we talked in the past about when you came into the league with the Jets, Pete Carroll was your defensive coordinator. He was only there the one year you were there uh, before he left. But uh, Pete Carroll's still going strong, Victor, and I just wanted to get your opinion of him as a coach. A lot of us, well, not myself, but a lot of people, I think, think of him as just a rah-rah guy. Was he a teacher and an excellent O guy, too? He was, man. I like Pete Carroll. And actually, I was there a couple of years. He was my head coach as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I love Pete. He was a player coach, and I think you can see that. I think that's why he had so much success at USC. Um, you know, and he was an excellent in those guys. He was a technician in terms of back then the secondary, uh, cause he, he was with the defensive backs as well. So, you know, I loved him. It was a bad rap that I think he didn't get a chance. I mean, we went nine and seven his first year as a head coach, you know, uh, after coming off three and 13 and, and one and 15. So, uh, you know, so that was a step up to me, <laughs> right? And then they fired him. So, uh, I like him. I think he's, uh, I mean, he's shown what he's done in, uh, at, in Seattle right now. I mean, Super Bowls, you know, multiple Super Bowls and uh, NFC championships. So, I mean, you can't question the guy what he's done over his career since he left the Jets. So, you know, I, I, I have great admiration and, 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 uh, and respect for him. And I said in the opening, Victor, I, I just, I'm shocked that, uh, with your career, especially while you were at the Jets, you didn't, we well, weren't elected to a Pro Bowl, but uh, I do like to bring up some of your teammates. Uh, a guy like Aaron Glenn to me, I, he's another guy that he made Pro Bowls, Victor, but he was kind of underrated. I mean, if you ask people now about Aaron Glenn, they'll get him mixed up with like a lot of guys named Glenn who played in this league, but this is a guy, 41 picks during his career, uh, not a big guy. Tell us more about him as a teammate. He was a special guy. Man, Aaron Glenn in his days was probably the top two or three corners in the game. I mean, that's that's not blowing smoke because he's my teammate. I mean, Aaron was a shutdown corner. I mean, he was small, but he had he was feisty. Um, you know, he was fast, he was quick as lightning, and uh, you know, he he studied. I mean, he was a student of the game. I mean, we were in the film room, you know, every week multiple times a day, you know, just studying film. And, uh, you know, if he was, you know, Marcus Coleman's size, I mean, he would be in the Hall of Fame right now. But, mm-hmm. you know, Aaron Glenn didn't get a lot of the um, uh, credit he deserved. I mean, we didn't have the, the media as they have it now, the social media. If we had that there, we got a lot more exposure. But Aaron Glenn was a real deal. And, you know, I put him up to a lot of these corners even today. Aaron Glenn just as good as any of them. Victor, I want to get your thoughts on, you know, we, we touched on AB a minute ago and, and just more about the, the player mentality today, because we saw AB force his way out of Pittsburgh. We saw Minka Fitzpatrick force his way out of Miami. We see Jalen Ramsey now trying to, you know, force his way out of Jacksonville. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for the league when uh, we start seeing players, you know, I'm not going to play. I want out that sort of thing and, and forcing the sort of, you know, circumventing the free agency. Uh, system and deciding they don't want to play for the team they're currently on? You know, I, I think it's a bad time. You know, a bad thing for these guys it is it's like monkey see, monkey do. Right? And 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 you keep doing this and you got a lot of 
young guys in this league. This league, you know, now is a young man game. And when you see a, a first year, second year guy, and then you see a Fitzpatrick or a Ramsey say, "Hey, I don't want to be here." Now this guy got clout talking about that first or second year. Now he's in the third or fourth year. Hey, I want to leave because I ain't happy. You know, you ain't giving me my money, or I don't like my defensive coordinator. I don't like my head coach. Trade me, right? So I, I think they open up a, a, a can of worms uh, that I don't think the league gonna be able to, uh, you know, stop unless they, you know, they put some rules in place and 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 you know the next CBA and uh, you know and allow these. I, I don't know how you stop it. I I I don't think that you can. But, you know, it's not good for those guys. And, uh, and I think teams, you know, shouldn't just trade for these type of cancers. You know, no, you know, no point attended. But when you get bad apples, man, you know, and you go to another, you know, some good, good crop, man, it just, it's just going to spoil the bunch. I mean, you know, just like AB, right? You go to a team, you know, the best player on the team, just about. Now you go to a team or another cancer. Now, you know, you do the same thing, right? And, uh, and, and it's just not going to stop, man. And so the team's got to step up and say, you know what? We're not going to trade for you, right? That's where you're going to see a, a stoppage of that situation happen when the team step up and do it because it's like, you know what? You did to me. You know, you're going to do it. You're going to do it here too. And, uh, you know, so somebody got to step up and do that. And uh, if they don't, you're going to see more of the same. And, Victor, to that end, right, if if you were still playing and a guy, one of those guys, whether it's an A.B. or a Fitzpatrick or a Ramsey or whatnot, you you come in one day and the next thing you know, they got traded uh, to your team. Do you you, as a leader on that team, do you pull those guys aside and say, hey, look, I I don't know what happened in Jacksonville. I don't know what happened in Pittsburgh. I don't know what happened in Miami. But we don't have that here. We're not going to do that here. This is how we do things. Do you have to step you, – you and the captains of the team got to step up and pull that guy aside and let him know how it's going to be, you know, within your locker room? Absolutely. And I guarantee you that's what happened in New England. You know, that's why, you know, they can plug in – get plug in guys. They lost new two left tackles. They lose a running back. They lose – you know, it don't matter. They have a culture there, all right? And when you got Tom Brady, you got guys like myself, you got, you got Mo Lewis and Marvin Jones. Hey, we're going to have a conversation with you, hey, man. This is the way we do things here. And, you know, we don't want you coming here disrupting our flow. And, and, and most time when guys come to a veteran team, you know, they understand and they can conform to the way things are. But a lot of times, the, you know, these teams now are so much, you know, younger, right? And they got, you know, these guys are doing the same thing. They're about the same thing. So, you know, that guy, Ramsey, you know, who's pretty established, Go to Cleveland. You know who, who's on Cleveland is going to say something to him, right? Or you know, so it, it's like it depends on where they go. I think if they if he go to you know, think about AB. AB really was you know pretty civil in New England. You really didn't hear anything about him. You know, the, the couple of weeks he was there, right? Because you know guys took him on the thing and say took him on his belt. But he had some conversations, you know, with with guys like Tom Brady. So you know, when you get a veteran guy like Ramsey. You know, come to maybe the Jets. You know, you may have Adam, you may have Mosley, but they young guys too, and they friends for the most part, right? So, do they want to rattle that friendship? So it just depends, man. It's a different time than when we play, and 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 the way things are now. Uh, you know, the league has changed. I mean, it, it changed so much, man. And you know, you may have some guys on on a, on a veteran team that may say something, but. You know, in my days, we definitely would say something to a guy like that to coming over for sure. So, Victor, a couple more before we let you go. And and one of the things I got to point out for our listeners who don't follow Victor on social media, you got to do it. Because as a guy, I'm 54 years old. I look at Victor, 49, almost 50. You got a couple of more months to go before you're 50. But, Victor, you look yeah, better right. now than, than when you were playing in the league. You look like you could still suit up and go out there and put the 21 on and still play. Kudos to you. Yeah, look can be deceiving though, man. I got ice on my knees right now. <laughs> but <laughs> I literally got ice on my knees right now, man. So uh but I do I work, I train, I train kids and uh you know, I try to help them out. My son, he's a he's a senior in nine high school committed to UNC. So I just had practice today, man. So I just 
I try to help out where I can, and, and I train some people at the gym. So with that, you know, I always been the type that loved to work out. I stayed in the gym, and it's just still a part of my regimen now. So I appreciate the compliment, and uh, but uh, you know, I don't think I can come back for a paycheck right now, though. <laughs> 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 hey, Victor, you're doing you're doing great things with your foundation. Talk about the, all the great things the Victor Green Foundation is doing. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, we got a tournament uh, October first in New York at Glenhead Country Club, and this year we're uh, we're trying to send 120 kids from Freeport, New York, to they do it's a, a chorale, um, uh underprivileged kids that love singing, man, and they're gonna be singing at the uh, they're gonna sing the national anthem. And God bless America at the tournament. And they travel around doing different, and they actually uh, perform at the Jets game before. Uh, so they perform at different places. So they're going in, uh, uh, Indianapolis to perform and they need like $10,000 for tickets. And then they supposed to raise $600 a person, uh, a kid rather. So this year the foundation is, is, is supporting, uh, as much as we can to help send them to, uh, Indianapolis, man. But we, you know, the Victor Green Foundation is we just try to create opportunities for underserved kids and, and try to help them see outside of their circumstance. So, you know, they get locked in to where they are and, and don't think that they can they can leave where they are, man. But we try to take them out that box so they can see a bigger picture and hopefully they can dream a little bigger. And, Victor, I can't let you go without asking about your golf game because I've seen uh, some video of your golf swing. Look pretty solid, my friend. Man, I shot a 68, man. I shot a 68 a couple oh. weeks ago. Wow. I'm down, to, I'm down to low single digits. So golf game is, is, is pretty steady. Um, uh, you know, I'm, you know, if I shoot, you know, 82, that's a bad day for me, you know, so I usually going to go below that. So hopefully I try to stay in the high to mid to mid seven that I kind of like, but I can go lower if I'm putting well that day. Wow. I got to get you on the yeah. golf side. Yeah. Get you on the golf show and talk a <laughs> talk a little golf swing with you, my friend. Unbelievable. Good for you. Yeah, I can I can play a little bit, man. I, my short game is really good. My chipping is 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 where it, where it saves me. My you know my 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 driver. I'm pretty steady there. I mean, 10, 11 fairways most times. You know, I mean, I probably eight, 10 fair uh, greens. But when I but my short game, I can pretty much get up and down. You know, eighty. I say seventy percent of the time, if I'm putting well, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm get up and down. Uh, I feel pretty confident about that. Yeah, that's where it's all at, my friend. Yeah. Anyway, on the golf side, that's what all the top instructors. Short game, short game, short game. My good friend Tom Patry talking all about the short game. So yeah, that's where it's won and lost. So good for you, good. Victor. Let our listeners well, know how they can stay up to date with all the great things you're doing, whether it's online or it's on social media. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can reach our foundation at victorgreenfoundation.org. Um, you can, you know, donate, uh, there, uh, Twitter, Victor Green 21, Facebook, Victor Green and, uh, BG Foundation for, uh, Instagram. So, uh, I want to say guys, I, I appreciate you guys too, man. You guys do a great job and, you know, uh, we're getting information out there to the fans and having some solid, uh, people like myself on every week, weekend and week out. So keep doing what you guys are doing, man. Big respect to you guys. Ah, we appreciate you very much, Victor. Take care, my friend. All the best to you and your family. We'll catch up again soon. Oh, man. Much love, though. Take care. Good night. See you, Victor. That's a great Victor Green. And, Bob, I'm telling you, and I'm sure you agree with this, there's not a better safety maybe in the history of the NFL than Victor Green. It's It's been a head scratcher, and you mentioned this at the top of the show. How that guy was never in a Pro Bowl doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, he's on the Jets' all-time team, for crying out loud. He's the standard by which all Jets' safeties are measured, and uh, and, and, a, and obviously a tremendous guy and a tremendous golfer on top of all of that. Yeah, exactly. Chris never never really missed a game in New York either. He was just so, so solid, and you saw his, you heard his candidness, and, and all I'm thinking when I'm hearing Victor speak is, I said, he'd get, he'd get He'd get along very well with a guy like Greg Lloyd. I wish they played on the same defense. Can you imagine? <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of fun talking yep. to Victor. Great guy, Chris. Great guy. Yes, he is. Look forward to catching up soon. All right, we've got our next guest, Tony Collins, hanging on the line. We're going to get to Tony on the other side of this real quick station break. <laughs> 